Hello Pirates and welcome to another weekly update of Battle Pirates. Today is Tuesday, June 30th, 2020 and this is the 10.27 update. There's a lot of content today so this video might be a little bit long. Uh, let's start with the update itself which has the summary of what's going on. It's going to be deployed in a few minutes, about 30 minutes the update actually starts. During that time the game will be unavailable, they're going to have two campaigns coming up. Um, a lot of changes uh, to improve the experience of brand new players and to actually help a lot of players who may have fallen behind ca ca to catch up. So if you recently uh, returned to the game or if you have friends who are thinking about returning to the game, this is a good time. They're going to get a lot of content and I'm going to cover it all in detail. Um, there's a whole thread about that, so I'm going to skip it for now and cover that in the thread. They're also addressing the problem with metal dumping, uh, which is when uh, players are losing battles on purpose to reduce their metal count, and then they go attack other people to steal their metals. Uh, a lot of people don't care about metals, but for those who do, that can be very annoying, and they have a solution for that, which I'm also going to cover in details in a moment. Pillage starts tomorrow, runs until Sunday, and the key point in Pillage is getting the new uh, Mutineer flagship. There's a whole thread about that too, I'm going to go in detail. And for the first 24 hours of Pillage, there will be a, a T9 skirmish recon target, so you can try your partial Mutineer fleet on them and see how it goes and get some practice going. Uh, the two new, t not new, returning TLCs are Son of Poseidon, if you want to get Pegasus content, which by now is old. I really don't think you should bother much with this, unless you're a new player and you do these new campaigns for new players and you get a new fleet of Pegasus and you want to upgrade them. There are some upgrade, upgrade tokens here, but honestly, it's an, an easy one to skip. Cry Havoc, I intend to do this campaign because mainly of the Warhound build tokens. With these new tier 9 armors coming out for Conquerors, I do intend to refit my Warhounds to have some of these new armors. And so these tokens will be really handy. You can get 3 Mastery Runs and you get some Structure build tokens, so 3 times in total and 3 Warhound tokens. So I'm going for them. Some bug fixes and there's one very important here. Okay, overall some improvements, map, metals, blah, 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 blah. But this one, the Hellswarm. So last week before Bounty, Kixai nerfed the UAV, the built-in UAV of the Hellswarm. It was supposed to go from doing damage three times in one second around the target and then chaining on to the next target and again damaging three times in one second and moving on and moving on like that. It was supposed to go to circling a target for two seconds instead of one and firing twice. They only implemented half of that apparently and it was only firing once per second but this, the, the swarm time around the target did not increase from 1 to 2 seconds, so as a result, the UAV was only firing once per target and moving on. So after tonight's update, it's going to stay longer around the same target, meaning it's going to take longer to chain throughout the whole base, but it's going to fire twice per target, which might be enough to overpower some healing by GKs and stuff like that. Uh, what annoys me is that we did the whole of bounty with this hellswarm feature the uav broken and i wasn't even aware of that like there was no communication no nothing and i was spending time and coins repairing my hellswarms which were a lot less effective after the nerf and now i find out that they were broken so really i think along with that fix we should at least get some Conqueror repair tokens or maybe some Hailstorm refit tokens, you know, because that's not right. That does not sit well with me. Anyways, so that's overall for the update. Uh, let's move on now 
to the next topic. So the big next one, and, and this is, I think, the biggest feature of this release, is the community has been pointing out that there is no path for new players to make progress in the game. So there's no way to progress if you just start playing BP or come back to the game after a few years away and stuff like that. So now there is. I, I plan on testing this, and I'm, I'm sure some other players will too. But the cool thing is these changes will benefit active players as well. So if you're active but you're behind, pay attention because it says here all these benefits will be for all new and existing pirates. So if you're play, playing, you will get it all as well. So everybody's going to have the following buildings in their base instantly upgraded to outpost to level 11, dock to level 15, shipyard to level 6, Conquest chart to level 2, warehouses, 5 of them, which is all of them at level 17. All portals to level 3. And I'm not going to read one by one, but you get the idea. You can read it here. All the resource gatherers to level 10. One that's going to benefit me, the uranium uh, facility going to level 5 and the titanium to level 5. I don't have them that high. So I'm expecting right after the upgrade, I'm going to go check and see if they are level 5. And if they are, that solves a big problem, which is getting uranium and titanium during raids. And the other labs as well, they're going to all get a certain upgrade level. This is not the highest level, but it puts you at a decent level, right? So new players will get, for instance, when they get a new fleet, they're going to be at dock 15. They're going to be able to use a lot of these fleets right away because their dock will support the maximum weight of 200,000 tons at level 15. And then all, all that's left for the player to do is to upgrade the one level more to be at the top level of those buildings, right? And some of them, like the labs, probably, I think there's like going to be two or three levels here to upgrade. It seems to me they're pretty much bringing everyone and all the buildings to what was possible at Outpost 11. And that's great because honestly, spending months trying to go from Outpost 1 to 11 and not being able to hit any targets sucked. And this is good. So you start with that. And then there is going to be a treasure trove campaign. And I don't know what ship's going to be required to do that campaign. It's probably something that they're going to just give to us. Uh, but with that fleet, whatever it may be, once you finish the treasure trove, you get a full fleet of Praetorians with the flagship at U0, not upgraded. A full fleet of Breachers at U0, so you can also even do like Bounty, you know, the basic level. A full fleet of Tier 8 Defenders, and it doesn't say here, but I suppose it's not upgraded. So two Gorgons, a Lurker, a Carnage, and a Houndmaster, which is good for a new player, right? All blueprint turret specials, that's great. So just as they did with players with the new ROE, they're going to be giving all specials. But it doesn't say anything about the, the panels. Or some of the transformers, which are blueprints. So that I don't know. But they're going to get all specials. Four heavy turret transformers. And need I remind you, you can get one extra every week in FM. So if you start with 4, the maximum is 12. In 8 weeks, supposing you can do FM properly, you're going to get the other 8 you need. That's less than 2 months probably. Well, with rates, probably 2 months and a half. And you get T8 heavy turrets and build tokens. So that's great. Uh, so Praetorian, Breacher, yeah, yada yada. Chests. Okay, so with the... With the Praetorian fleet that new players will be gifted doing that campaign when they start. They now can do FM and by doing FM there will be some fleets available in the FM with, as chests. So you do FM, you score points, you redeem those chests, you open the right chest and you're going to get a full Dragoon fleet with the flagship, a full Silverfish fleet with the flagship and a full Saturn fleet with the flagship. That covers all PvE silos now, 
considering you're going to have the Praetorians as well. Okay, so we got these three, and with these three, you can now go into more campaigns that are permanent, and you can only do them once. And so with your Saturns, you do the introduction to assault uh, campaign. And with that, you're going to get the War Pegasus flagship and a Pegasus fleet, plus tokens and tech to go with it. Then with your Dragoons, you do the introduction to siege campaign, which is permanent again. And with that, you're going to get token, siege tech, the atomic punisher, and the punisher MK2 fleet. And it doesn't say here, but I am making the assumption that none of those will be upgraded. But still, you get, in this case, the latest siege fleet available in game. Same with skirmish. So with the silver fishes, you can do introduction to skirmish. And with that, you're going to get a full fleet of riots with the flagship, with the tech, with the tokens. And boom, you're all caught up. Look at that. Okay, in terms of base defense here, it says a little bit more that by doing the campaigns above, you're going to have nine new fleets and you're going to have the following base defense content. Heavy turrets, pretty much all the tier 8 heavy turrets, Silver Strike, Downburst Cannon, Stormbringer, Thunderlord, Tempest, Chimera, Thunderclap, it's all here. And there you go. So now there is a very clear path for new and returning players to catch up. And if you're an active player but you fell behind, you're also going to have access to all of that stuff. So all of a sudden tomorrow, you can go and get a brand new Riot fleet. You can go and get a brand new Punisher fleet. It's not upgraded, but it's going to be fully equipped. It just remains to be seen how well built they'll be. But again, it's much better than what we have up to today where there's no progression path. Now there is a clear progression path. I, I give kudos to Kixai for listening and I just hope these fleets are well built. That's all I can say. Let's move on to the next topic. The third piece of the upgrade this week is the pillage, of course. It's the last event before the next raid and let's see what's going on in pillage starting tomorrow. It's, in my opinion, the, the easiest, it might be the most boring, but also the easiest event to do. There's only two top targets and you only need two fleets. This month we need the Praetorians and the Punisher MK2s. The main prize is the Mutineer flagship, the Merciless Mutineer. Uh, one thing that confuses me here that it says it has debilitating rockets. But when you look at the stat block, it's actually for depth charges. So I'm not sure what they mean by rockets in there. The built-in weapon does explosive damage, but it's the same built-in weapon that the, the, the regular ships have. And it has a very nice friendly aura giving 10,000 survival to all the ships and more projectile speed. Uh, many players uh, noticed the projectile speed was an issue with the mutineers. They were too slow. The flagship partially addresses that as well as addresses survival with this big bonus here. Uh, the upgrades are uh, pretty much the same path as the others. More reload, more damage, uh, more survival than the regular ships. The regular ships, I think, gain 15,000 at YouTube. The flagship gains 18,000. And that's it. Targets, as I mentioned, one for the Punisher, one for the Praetorian. You do a top set, you score 5k, 5k and 10k bonus at 20k. Keep that in mind, so let's see what we get with 20k. The B targets, you can do with Dragoons and Infernal Dragons, if you have them. And you score 5k when you complete a set. And the C sets you can do with much older ships, which nobody should be using now because of those new campaigns I was talking about, where you're going to get Punishers, you're going to get Dragoons, you're going to get Praetorians. So I think as of tomorrow, everyone should be able to work B and A targets. Feature prizes, the Merciless Mutineer, 60,000 points. So remember I just said a top tar uh, set pays 20k, so you do 3 of each top targets, three with the Punishers, three with the Praetorians, you get the Mutineers. M my suggestion, 
get them done tomorrow as soon as possible. Redeem the Merciless Mutineer as soon as possible after you hit those six targets. And start building it and use your Forsaken Mission tokens and the ones you have saved, the ones from the FM starting tomorrow. Get this out and, you know, get it equipped and everything and ready for the raid as soon as possible. Uh, if you're missing anything else from the Mutineer series, uh, such as the limited guns, you can get 10 of them here. Each set of targets, each two targets, you get one. Specials, you can get them as well. The, the one thing I don't see here, but based on, on the past, I suppose they're going to add Merciless Mutineer VXP tokens. I really don't see them listed here, but they did that in the past. At least here you can see enough upgrade tokens to get the flagship to U3. Probably not before the raid, but you have the, the kits here if you want. And as I predicted, we will see more of those Conqueror limited armors, only one of each. So now we're going to increase our inventory potentially if you been getting if you got them on bounty, two of each. Now you can get a third. And you know, just keep equipping your ships with them. That's it. That's it for pillage. It's a simple event. Like I said, boring, simple, easy to do, good catch up. Let's move on to the final topic of this video today, which is the June CM diary. So Gilly posted this. There's a few things. One talking about HTML5. It's still there. Give it a try. See if it's better. Give them feedback. Because in January, I think it's going to be the only way of playing the game. July raid, we already know the name here. It's going to be called Hold Fast. It will be the first raid for the mutineers. And we have the date and everything for it. Coming soon. X1 level upgrade for the, all the mutineers. A brand new garrison hull. And honestly, I have no clue when we're going to find time in the shipyard to build this because it's always busy with a new raid fleet every two months. But here's the, the successor of the Praetorian. Uh, it's called the Everest. And it's going to be a mortar hull, not a rocket hull. And there will be eventually in July. It doesn't say when or in what event, but we'll be able to get the Everest and the Icefall Mortar. Again, no clue when we'll find the time to build it, but that's a different discussion. It just says it'll give details on July 7th, but I don't think that means it's going to be released on July 7th, maybe. Uh, the details on metal dumping, as I mentioned, they are capping how many medals a successful base defense will take from the attacker. So if, you, if your base defeats the attackers starting tomorrow or after this update, uh, you're only going to get 10 medals instead of up to 49. Um, two things that makes people dumping medals, they're going to have to work five times as hard as they do today to dump the same amount of medals. And... It gives more incentive on, peop to, for, on people to win medals by hitting bases, not just by sitting there and defending. Not that defending is easy, honestly. It's not. But here you go. That's their temporary solution. They make, made it this very clear. It's a temporary solution until they overhaul the medal system. And that's one of those coming soon TM things. We discussed the help for returning players in details. I'm not going to cover all of that again. And there's another update just saying that the soft factory is a few weeks away. It's not coming anytime soon. And in a week or two, there will be another post from Kix Braden, the, the new PvP designer that took over from Saltwater, who's saying goodbye to Battle Pirates, but staying with Kix Eye. Um, you know, he's going to write a little bit more about that. There are some contests, uh, the, the playlist ends tomorrow and it, they're saying in July there's going to be a movie poster contest. And the calendar for people who are always asking when is this event, when is that event. So July 30th, that's today, starts pillage. Uh, July 7th, and oh, they're saying they're going to have a raid strategy guide here to be confirmed. There, July 7th, um, it's the raid, hold fast for the mutineer. And there will be a follow-up post on the Saw Factory. And, and again, this is the date of the update. The, the actual raid starts on July 8th. 
right? Just as pillage actually starts on July 1st. And then July 14th is the, the next update and new FM cycle starts, VXP weekend, uh, whole calendar, and July 21st, it's the next update. So meaning July 22nd starts Bounty 34. All right, that's it. Uh, Gilly just wanted everyone to know it's a holiday in Canada, July 1st. Happy Canada Day to all my fellow Canadians. And she'll be off as such, so will I. Which means I'll probably have more time to do some barbecuing and some battle pirates playing. Take care, everyone. See you next time. Apologies for the very long update, but it was a lot of content, guys. I just had to, to cover it all, and I hope you found this helpful. Let me know if you'd rather have shorter videos with less depth or if that's okay. Give me comments. Give me some feedback. If you liked it, give me some thumbs up. Take care.